And this is the thing, many of us think, oh, you know, he's just saying it and it sounds nice. But think about it. Think about your life. Think about where you're going. Think about what you've done. Think about what you're doing. Know that your life can go at any time. Think about the, the reward you get when you die shaheed. Seventy virgin wives, subhanAllah. This is one of the blessings. Your walk to Jannat al-Firdaus, the highest paradise, before Ibrahim alayhi salam. What is more honorable than that? SubhanAllah. Before Ibrahim alayhi salam, you're going to Jannat al-Firdaus. Yeah? Think about the honor, dying for the sake of Islam. And the thing is, many of us have the attitude that, oh, I'm going on jihad, I'm going to die shaheed. No, you're not going to die shaheed, you might not. We think that, oh, by going to... <coughs> we have an equation. Me in jihad equals dying shaheed. No, that's not the case. Look at Ahmad bin al-Khattab, on his deathbed. Marks everywhere. Marks everywhere. He never believed that he was going to die in his bed. Ahmad bin al-Khattab, jihadi all his life. Jihad, 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 even all the battles. Marks everywhere. And he died in his bed, subhanAllah. See, we've got to remember that our ajal, our lifespan is fixed. We don't know when we're going to die. But there's nothing we can do to hasten it. So whether I'm sitting at home watching TV most of my life, or whether I'm out in jihad most of my life, makes no difference when I'm going to die. People seem to think, oh, these people who go on jihad for six months every year and they come back, they've got more chance of dying sooner than me. Forget chance. Your ajal is from Allah. Your lifespan is from Allah. So obviously it makes more sense to be striving for Islam than sitting at home because you can die anytime. This is what makes the Muslim so dangerous. So much barakah, so much reward for going on jihad. But, but jihad is not the fundamental solution. Jihad is what has to be done in these areas. No one can condemn the Mujahideen. We should praise, we should support the Mujahideen financially, verbally and physically. But we have to look realistically at what happens. Yeah. When we talk about jihad, when we talk about the Mujahideen, we think, oh, subhanAllah, we're going out to fight for the sake of Islam and that's it, the angels are fighting with us, la la la. We have to deal with the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that jihad has been fought in Russia, jihad has been fought in Afghanistan, jihad has been fought in Kashmir, jihad has been fought in Kosovo, jihad has been fought in Palestine, jihad has been fought in Syria, jihad has been fought in Lebanon, Jihad has been fought in Israel, in all of these places, and what has happened? Show me where Khilafah is now. Show me. Are any of these places I've mentioned Darul Islam? No. There's still Darul Kufr. Let's look at what happened in Bosnia. Mujahideen from Egypt, Mujahideen from Britain, from France, from Germany, from the Indian subcontinent, from Africa, from Europe, all over the place. They went and they fought. Fighting against the Serbs, then what happens? Serbs, Muslims, fighting, jihad. And then, who comes along and breaks up the little pushing around in the playground? The United Nations. Now, I'm not belittling what the Mujahideen have done. They've done something far greater than I've done. Far greater than I've done. And they deserve far more reward than what I'm doing. But, what is it that they've achieved? Now, it's correct to ask this. If we're talking about, as I said before, we're talking about ibadat and muamalat. If we're talking about ibadat, which is purely spiritual, don't ask what they've achieved. The person who asks what have they achieved is someone who is ignorant and then they don't understand this principle. If you ask what was the purpose of that rally, what was the purpose of that talk, what was the purpose of that store, what was the purpose of your da'wah, incorrect question. Because da'wah is fi sabilillah. Offensive jihad. Fi sabilillah. Defensive jihad, mu'amalat. It's not ibadat, it's mu'amalat. Because the purpose is to remove them from your land. Allah SWT says, fight those who fight you. Remove them from the land from where they removed you. And strike terror into the hearts of the kuffar. Ibadat. Fight those who fight you. They fight you, you fight them. Remove them from the land. Purely, this is material benefit. Fight. Fi sabilillah. For Isharuddin, for Islam to be dominant, SubhanAllah, this is spiritual. So I can say, okay, people who believe jihad is a method, people who believe jihad is the main thing, fair enough. 
jihad is something very important like tabligh is very important but if this is the sole purpose of your group then I'm sorry but the group is incorrect and it's not fulfilling its obligation now this may sound harsh but it's true many of us like to bend yeah hey brother why don't you speak to the tabligis why don't you correct them about what they're doing no no how can I correct them they call people to come to the mosque Yes, subhanAllah, they call people to come to the mosque which is something which is rewardable, something very good but are they fulfilling the obligations enjoined by Allah upon the group? To enjoin the mar'uf, forbid the munkr and call to Islam because khilafah is not here to establish khilafah are they doing this? No so if you have a jihadi group the whole purpose is jihad, jihad, jihad forget about it because what they've done, we can ask them and with regards to what they've done because it's mu'amalat. What have you achieved? The answer is nothing. United Nations, teacher in the playground, break it up. You're in the red corner, you're in the blue corner. United Nations steps in, this is your land, this is your land. Where are the mujahideen now? Where is the jihad? Oh Mr. Jihadi, why aren't you fighting against the United Nations? Because the United Nations aren't there anymore. MashaAllah, fikr waqa, you should be mujtahid. What we're talking about now is a system. Now how are you as a Mujahid going to tackle this system? It's politics. The United Nations is political, it's international politics. So you fight against them politically. That's why it all stops. Brother, yes, yeah, subhanAllah, I've been on Jihad. I was in, I was in Bosnia in 93, I'm going to Kosovo next week, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Brother, what are you talking about? You're going to Kosovo, you're going here, what are you? I don't even know what you're doing in London with your income support. Go back to Bosnia, man-made law is still dominant and the United Nations now has divided your land. Why don't you fight against them? The jihad doesn't stop. It's not just physical jihad, it's intellectual jihad, it's financial jihad and it's something that we must continue and it will continue into the Day of Judgment. All of these problems happen for one simple reason because we do not have an Islamic State. We do not have the Khilafah. When we're talking about states fighting against Mujahideen yeah, we're talking about states fighting against the state. Where is the army of the Khilafah? Look at Pakistan, for example. Look at all of the power that Pakistan has. It could destroy Serbia like that. What is it doing? The Pakistani army. You know what they do? In Kashmir, they drop off the Mujahideen at the border and then they turn back again. So why, why are you coming with us for? Oh, to protect you while we, while, while we take you here. Just to make sure you're okay. As soon as you're on the border, okay, lads, you're on your own. And they head back to their barracks. Some of them, they want to help. Some of them actually do sneak over, even for a couple of nights. And they fight against the, the Mushriks, and they come back. But what's going on? We need to wake up. It's not something where, oh, you know, a couple of Mujahideen go here and there. We need to do it on a proper level. On a proper level. How we do that is we work to establish Khilafah where you have an army, where you have an economy, where you have a political system where Islam is dominant. Otherwise it's going to continue. We're like, <coughs> you know this game in the fun fair where a frog comes up and you hit it and the next one comes up and you hit it, you hit it, all different ones. This is what's happening. This is what's happening in the, in, in the Muslim world. Problem, fight there, problem, fight there, and it's just popping up, popping up all over the place until one day it's going to explode and the Muslims are going to be massacred all over the place. We need to have a total army. We need to have the security, and the security only comes with Islam. It only comes with the Khilafah. It's as simple as that. You can't make it any more clearer than that. We need to have the Khilafah. We need to work to establish the Khilafah. There's no playing around. Working in Khilafah is not like a job, a part-time thing. Yeah, it's not something that's enjoyable. It's something that everyone must do. Everyone must work to establish the Khilafah. You may say, oh, what I'm doing is useless. What I'm doing is having no result. I'm banging my head against a brick wall. You're not banging your head against a brick wall. What you're doing, you're getting reward for and you're fulfilling your obligations. It's as simple as that. And what we need to do is learn from what's happening in Europe. Learn from what's happening in Bosnia. Learn from what happened in France. France isn't far. Where are we? Plumstead. Plumstead is near Kent. 20 miles across a bit of water, then you're in France. In the same place where Muslims were being massacred by the French Foreign Legion. 